Uh, tonight, I think I'll, I'll, you know, kind of feel that love. Um, I'm actually excited to get out there. Anytime I get a chance to go play in a non-NBA city, uh, I always get excited to play those games. That was Carmelo Anthony talking about the preseason game that he had a chance of playing in. What a great treat it was for Montreal. And on this week's Four Downs, we're talking about the Toronto Raptors giving you a season preview. As always, we invite you to join us on our social networks at facebook.com slash RBTL Sports and on Twitter at RBTL. We also invite you to check out our website, rbtlsports.com, for previous episodes. Our first guest for this week's segment is somebody who believes that basketball will one day come to Montreal. And that man is Mark Griffin. Great to welcome you to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me on. And yes, I firmly believed in this a lot for a long time. And uh, the game this week in Montreal is just further proof of that. Well, uh, we'll have a chance of talking about that and then obviously seeing about what you're doing with the Hoops Lounge. We're really uh, glad to have you on. So thanks for taking the time. Thanks. To his right is Anthony Cornelli, as always, dressed well. Uh, great to have you back. We're looking forward to some of your uh, opinions and, and feedback with regards to uh, the Eastern Conference and where this team stacks up. And last but not least, Pierre Evans, just our go-to guy for basketball. Great to have you, and I'm looking forward to what you have to say. Glad to be here. All right, let's talk about NBA in Montreal. You've mm -hmm. been a huge advocate of bringing a team back uh, in Montreal. Mm -hmm. First of all, let's talk about last week's Canada series. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you notice? Is there anything different from year one and year two or the ones that you've been part of? Uh, well, it's, it's a growing phenomenon. I mean, uh, last year it was the Celtics and the Timberwolves, but I mean, I'm sure we'll get to this. The We the North movement is... It's Canadian wide, and they played a game in Vancouver, game in Montreal. Uh, seeing the Raptors play, wear the the warm-up shirts, uh, the Le Nord say new, we the North. It's further proof that it's just growing. They're Canada's team. I talked to Masai Ujiri about this. One team, one country. It's just there's just this kind of clicking in, in the different cities around the country just saying you know what we're not just a hockey country and Montreal is not just a hockey town and I just I see it in the ball caps I see it in the arena people just love the game and you you actually had a chance of living in Toronto for quite a bit and it was quite exciting for you to be able to be in some games uh, like I said yeah like you said I lived in Toronto for a year uh, when the Raptors were playing the city was electric mm -hmm. I mean Toronto is a Toronto Maple Leafs the Blue Jays the Argos but you can't draw those types of stars in a city without the NBA. Yeah. I mean, get, like week in, week out, you had the Lakers, you have the Knicks, you got Melo, you got Kobe in there. Uh, the city was spectacular. The arena was just electrifying with the, with, it's a cool sport. Mm -hmm. And the city is, is, is a growing fast city in Canada. You know, it's, it's competing with New York as the New York of the North and the arena is just on fire, man. I mean, it's not mm -hmm. all fairy tales too. I mean, you know, there, there's <laughs> obviously those who will say that having a preseason game in Montreal is one thing, being mm -hmm. able to sustain a, a team is mm -hmm. another. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about you know, being able to sustain it long term? It's, well, not, it's, it's not an easy task, right? It's not an easy task, but I think we have a niche for it. I think that we have the population to do it. If Vancouver could sustain a basketball team, and the reason why they moved, if I'm not mistaken, and not really because of their population, it was mm -hmm. different factors that mm -hmm. had to move to Memphis, but mm -hmm. I think that we, we do have the population, we do have the, the, the basketball mm -hmm. the basketball niche, the people behind it to, to sustain it. Do you, do you agree with that, that why Vancouver and not Montreal? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I spoke to the GM of the Grizzlies about this, and his successor was the guy who moved the team, and he said flat out it was the currency that was a major issue. I'm sure there were other issues behind yeah. the scenes, but that was a major issue. Uh, in terms of Montreal. I wrote an article called Why Montreal is an NBA City. You can Google and find it. It's been up there for a year. People have been commenting on it. I think it, the, the, the huge pocket of people who love the game most in our city are 15 to 35. Yeah. The and youngest. it's a multi-ethnic group too. Yeah, I mean, it's very much multi-ethnic. And they, they can identify with the players on their court more so than hockey because it's just, it's more of a multicultural, multi-ethnicity yeah. you see in basketball in sure. the NBA. And so the thing is to sustain sick and season ticket holders, that's going to be an issue because they're young. They don't have the deep pockets, of course. but they're coming along. So it's growing that yeah. way. Well, speaking of coming along, this team has made huge strides mm -hmm. uh, with regards to the Eastern Conference and being able to keep the nucleus intact. Seven other top scorers are now together. They're bringing them back. I'm sorry, jury's done a great job. Um, let's start with you, Anthony, in terms of the expectations you have for the Toronto Raptors. It's very, been very rare that the word high and expectations have been in the same sentence, right? For the first time, there's a lot of pressure on the Toronto Raptors. Where do you, uh, what kind of expectations do you think they have? Well, absolutely. I think the, it's their division to lose in the Eastern Conference in the Atlantic. So um, I believe with Lowry and uh, the Rosen back second year together, like you said, they kept the nucleus together. If uh, Jonas... Uh, can be the third leg to the tripod, I think that the Raptors could contend. Uh, maybe not for the NBA title, but definitely make some noise in the Eastern Conference. Pierre? Well, with the, all the upheaval that's going on in the Eastern Conference right now, the Pacers are not going to be as good. Cleveland, it's a new team, a new coach. LeBron going back. Chicago, we're not really sure what's going to go right now with Dirt Rose. If he stays injured, they're definitely going to be a contender. 
they're the only team, if mm-hmm. I'm not mistaken, that is bringing back their entire nucleus. Yeah, that's it. They re-signed Kyle Lowry. Mm-hmm. They re-signed Patrick Patterson. Spaces the floor. Mm-hmm. But, me, but, but, then those, but, a, but then those would argue. Course. Those would argue then when you say the word contender, mm-hmm. what are you what are you contending? Are you contending for second place in the East? Are you contending for third place in the East? Do you think that they have? Mm-hmm a deep enough team to be able to battle a team, for example, like the Chicago Bulls who won 48 games last year without Derrick Rose. Well, this, I mean, that's a, those are monster teams in yeah. the East. Right? Yeah, I mean, the biggest, the biggest issue here is injuries. Uh, people don't realize that the Raptors were one of the healthiest teams in the league last year. They didn't lose guys the games. And they're kind of building a Spurs system, San Antonio Spurs, where they're sustaining, they're bringing the key guys in. in. They're, they're, they're building a foundation of kind of a family atmosphere that yeah. I talked to Kyle Lowry Defensive about. Defensive oriented. Yeah. Yeah. It's more of a team so, effort than so individual stars. Chemistry is not an issue for these guys. It's staying healthy and, and just kind of adding new guys. And they've added a few new guys this year. So it's just. But is it enough? That's the thing. I mean, is it enough to be able to go up against the likes of, of the, and even Washington. That's, that's and gonna even be, Washington. Yeah, and that's so going to be the challenge. Yeah, that's yeah. going to be the challenge if it can reach that next level. Obviously, Jonas is on, mm-hmm. on Larry. It's on DeRozan reaching the next level. Mm-hmm. And Valanciunas. Mm-hmm. If. It's a big if. If he reaches the same standard that he had in Spain, mm-hmm. which he was probably the best big man in that tournament, not yeah. named, oh, I was not named Anthony I, I, Davis. I saw the so tournament firsthand. I was trained with Akeem in yeah. the summertime, yeah. worked on his post moves. Yeah, so yeah I heard about that. He was, yeah. was trained with, with yeah. Akeem a lot. Right? And he, and you he, can tell that he takes it seriously. It's just a matter but, of reaching But the even if the big Anthony. three, even mm-hmm. if the Raptors' big three mm-hmm. stay healthy and have a great year, can they compete with Rose being back from injuries? Yeah. If Joachim Noah is healthy, they, uh, the, the Chicago Bulls added uh, Paul Gasol. Can mm-hmm. they compete with the Chicago Bulls, the Cleveland Cavaliers with the that's, new big three? All, that's LeBron ultimately and company. the question. Yeah. And, and you bring up a great point. Yeah. It's it's where do they stack up, right, mm-hmm. in the East? Because ultimately, it's how far up in the East they're going to make it will be yeah. a deciding factor in terms of a great season or not. They'll have to play one of these teams in the second round. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and they want to finish at three. They don't want to yeah, go. They, they absolutely. Want to, yeah. They, they want, want to regress, right? Yeah. They want to progress. And they're getting a leg up on Washington because Bradley Beal's not starting the season. Yeah. So that's that's a plus for them. And they're bringing back the same team. It's yeah. just a matter and of. Uh, Derrick Rose has to be healthy. He hasn't been healthy in two yeah. years. Yeah. This is I'm a so, Bulls fan, so, <laughs> so I'm a Bulls fan, so don't, <laughs> jinx, don't jinx me. Don't jinx yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that there's also, you know, one of the things that I've noticed about the team, and, and maybe you guys can weigh in on this. Um, I think that it's a mental game too with the yes. Raptors. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going in with such a heavily favorite, you know, the, the Cavaliers and you've got the, the, the Bulls on the Eastern Conference. It's really a mental thing. Do you guys agree with that? In yeah. the sense that the Raptors need to believe. Well, that's the right. Thing. It's not just playing well and yeah. being deep because you look at Lou Williams off the bench and what he can spark up. And I mean, he's instant offense right mm-hmm. off the bench. But is, is it really a mental thing? Do you agree with that? Or is it literally well, just a numbers game and, and the Raptors just don't have the firepower to do it? Well, that's, that's the job of the coach. Mm-hmm. The coach, having the experience last year going to the playoffs, they lost basically because they had a bad matchup with Joe Johnson in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. Brooklyn's going through up evil as well. Brooke Lopez, we're not entirely sure if he's going to be healthy. So for Toronto, the, all, their, all their chips on the table to do well. It's just a matter of believing. DeRozan believing that he's an all-star. Carol Larry believing that he's one of the, the he top point guards in the league. Yeah. And he should have been an all-star as well. Stay right there, gentlemen. I want to continue this conversation. But speaking of DeRozan, take a look and have a listen to what he said about the crowd in Montreal as they pumped him up to win the basketball game. Have a listen. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, we feed off that without a doubt. And, you know, that's that's the cool thing about having having dedicated fans like that. You know, we feed off of it. 